from where we left off but in the meantime please click on the notification button um, subscribe share and like and make sure that you abide by the government's containment strategy on COVID-19 because it's real the good news is the vaccines are in so everybody is gearing towards um, getting vaccinated so that we all keep ourselves safe so space face and then um your hands wash your hands observe the two meter rule and then wear your mask so let's continue from where we left off um listen to and pay attention to your children that is the most very important thing in keeping the strength journal make sure you listen pay attention to your child because most of us do not pay attention to our kids because we have so many things doing we have to go to work when we come back from work we are tired we have to get some rest before we continue with the rest of the day so we don't actually listen and pay attention to our children so as a matter of fact if you are a very busy parent make time make time make time and make time for your child because that is very important otherwise somebody out there will make time for your child and they will infiltrate their thoughts so you have to have time for your child even in your busy schedule try and make time for your child so let's read along children as in kids know their strength better than anyone in order to listen effectively you must do the following so we are going to go through series of do's and don'ts that will help you have that or pay that attention to your child listen to and pay attention so we are going to go through a series of um determinants factors that will help us all teachers and parents to be able to pay attention and listen to a child number one Ask a lot of questions and avoid questions that can be answered with a simple yes or no. So that is another skill that we need to learn. Avoid questions that requires answers like yes or no. Make sure you ask a little bit complicated questions that requires the child to discuss or have a chat or converse more be in the conversation mode so that you can listen more to what the child says you don't ask questions that will come up with the answers yes or no so try and design your questions that will attract discussions and conversations dialogue so that you hear and then you listen to the side of what he or she has to say that will also allow you to assess the child individually cognitively if they have the communication skill if they are good in sort of communicating telling you what they want what they need and everything that you need to know number two show your children that you are interested in their options and perspective 
for every answer you receive follow up with another question why do you think that why do you think this and why do you think that so there should be that interesting opinions and perspective from the parent if you show that interest about the questions you ask and follow it up with how and why. Why do you think this? Why do you think so? It means that you are opening up for the child to also have a dialogue with you. So it's gonna be a two-way system, not a one-way dialogue. So that is called effective communication. You show interest in your um, you show interest in what the child is talking about and ask relevant questions, follow up questions that will bring more discussion and dialogue with your child. So number one, you have to show him that or her that you are interested in what is going on. And then their opinion also counts. So you give him that fuel or her that fuel to be able to also come back and tell you the whys and the what's. Number three, genuinely listen to and reflect back to your children what you believe you heard them say. So it's like repeating what they are saying. So that is another scale of effective communication. You give them back what they say so that they will know that you are listening, active listening that you are interested in what they are saying and then you have got their back and you are interested in everything they do. Their opinions also count. So with that, they will have a very positive dialogue with you. So if one child tells you he or she no longer wants to play soccer, rather than telling him or her why he or she should say, should say, I hear you saying soccer no longer interests you. Can you tell me why? Or if your daughter, for, the, for example, tells you that she wants to learn how to play the organ as an instrument, you ask her, you told me you want to learn how to play organ. Can you tell me why? So these are some of the questions that you ask as you go along having a dialogue with your child so that it's going to be a very positive conversation they will come to you or tell you why they have chosen what they are telling you so at least it's going to be something that they will like to tell you and when they say i want to do this you ask and repeat that okay you said you want to play football or you said you want to learn how to play organ or learn how to play violin or go out there and learn how to do uh, ballet why do you want to do that so they will tell you their interests the reason why they want to play soccer the reason why they want to um, go and join the ballet the reason why they want to learn an instrument like an organ so if they tell you the why's then that's the time that you need to also have some follow-up questions that so after learning what to do or learning about the the, the 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 act that you want to do what are you going to do with it have you got any plans of you know pursuing it as a career or something like that so you pers you, you you ask you know following questions that will also bring about a dialogue a positive dialogue let's go on resist the urge to evaluate everything and overstate expectations so there is a resistance of the edge to evaluate everything and overstate expectations so this is what happens let's 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 read on whilst most parents want their children to succeed sometimes they unintentionally burden children by evaluating everything they do 
So when you evaluate everything they do, you overburdens them. It becomes a challenge for them. And when it becomes a challenge for them, it becomes very difficult for them to pursue their endeavors. So when your daughter, for example, shows you a picture she drew, instead of saying it is good, ask her what she likes best about the drawing. So, you know, these are all the little pointers, the little, little factors that you need to learn. We are all learning because most of the parents don't know all these things. But when you open up your mind and have, you know, just willing to learn these good things, it's going to help you bring up your child in a very good way. So, as they are saying, Instead of saying it is good, ask her what she likes best about the drawing. So at least that is going to bring out the conversation that will determine why he or she drew that picture. So over evaluation, whether negative or positive, makes children worry about how well they are doing. And this stifles the ability to take reasonable risk. So as a parent, you don't need to push your child with negative comments or over evaluation because it's going to knock down their confidence, but you need to put that confidence in them so that they'll be able to come out with their best. So it makes children worry about how well they are doing. And this is a very serious thing that parents do that stifles their progress. So we will come back and finish off with this um, factor. Thanks for watching and we will be back with the next video.